Now for more, let's go to David Madden, market analyst at Equity in London. Welcome back to the program, David. Now, so soon after the pandemic and with inflation at record levels in many economies, the US, Europe and China, including, how equipped are governments right now to confront another recession? To be perfectly honest, not very well. Um, the, the main kind of one of the main issues sur um, surrounding surrounding the, the crisis is it, it's high levels of inflation as covered in your intro, and this is this is this primarily comes from high levels of um, high, 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 high energy prices, high food prices, largely down to, to the war in Ukraine. Uh, we're still reeling with the impacts of the supply chain problems from the pandemic. Uh, we're still we're still reeling from the issue, the the problems associated with the recent the relatively recent lockdowns in China. So these are all issues that are mostly outside of the control and and, and the and the um the control and the governance of various different governments. Now what what they can do in some cases they could alleviate um the, the higher costs with tax cuts or perhaps even relief on uh, on um. The, the excises and taxes imposed on energy, but to a certain extent, that's not that, that'll only that'll only help uh, consumers and, and and shoppers to a certain extent. The, the the big picture issues, the uncertainty over what's going to happen with gas prices, is there is there going to be continuing fl flows of gas from Russia into mainland Europe uh, throughout the winter? Are we going to have further kind of lockdowns and restrictions surrounding surrounding China? When are we going to get back to pre-pandemic level in terms of supply chain flows? These are all issues that are be, that are beyond the control of the government, and these are the issues that are really weighing on sentiment and, actually, and are actually are the, are the driving factors behind the likes of the IMS downgrade. Right. So you mentioned that there, the rising cost of energy and natural gas prices reached their highest since 2008 because of Russia's decision to cut the flow of gas to Europe down to a trickle, pretty much. So what can European nations do? You mentioned tax cuts, but it's not really an issue of price, is it? It's the actual supply. They need the gas to burn and they're willing to pay if they have it. You're absolutely right. It isn't down to price. Uh, any kind of tax cuts or uh, a relief on on, on fuel on fuel will only do a, a certain only do a, a certain amount of benefit. Uh, we've already seen proposals by the European Union to have an across the board um, to, to short you know, cut, cut, cut gas usage by up to 15%. Uh, one of the most exposed countries in the European Union is Germany. Over 50% of its entire gas supports come from Russia. We've already seen it in recent months. Russia, Germany have actually signed up, well, put in place new partnerships uh, with the likes of, of, of both Norway and also uh, with, um, with with Qatar in terms of getting trying to get a alternative energy sources, most notably for both Norway and and Qatar. Um, hydrogen, but also LNG, liquefied natural gas from Qatar as well. But these these this, these, these infrastructure projects and these new pipelines, it will take a long time for it to come on stream. There there will be no quick fixes to this. I think in the near term, what's the what's the best way around it will be for a, a, a broad EU wide uh, cut and, and, and decline in use of gas. All right, David Madden from Equity in London. Thank you for joining the program. Thank you.